One. So a busy couple of days. I was browsing Reddit while on the phone with this lady. That is how much she needed my help. A few of the questions with my answers as well as I can remember to follow. Background. She wanted a special we are not allowed to give out in the store. We were not too busy, but we weren't dead. But I was the only insider in the store. Me, two drivers, that's all. Also, there was a lot of periods where she was discussing what was going on and what she needed with what sounded like several people in the background. And several pauses, but I won't be relaying those parts. I don't know how to order online. I need you to talk me through it. Okay. So what do I do? Go to hellfreezerpizza.com, order online. And then what? Before I can answer, she answers herself, which is good, because I can't remember what the layout says. Okay, I'm on the pizza, I just want cheese. How do I get just cheese? I'm dumbfounded. I see pork, beef, blah, 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 light, normal, extra. Whatever it says, I wasn't strictly paying attention. I don't want any of that stuff. So, don't pick it? I honestly said that. I really don't know how I got away with that. I think it was rude, but I guess she wasn't paying attention. Okay, so how do I- oh, okay. Longish pause. Which I said I wasn't relaying, but apparently I'm rather untrustworthy. So now it says choose an address. What do I do? Uh, do you have an address saved? Probably not, right? I mean, she didn't even know the website. All the addresses are blank. What do I do? Add an address? Seriously. Nearly every remark I made was hesitant because I truly thought she was fucking with me. She obviously knew how to do the basic stuff on the computer. And everything I told her, she had either found by the time I told her, or she found instantly afterwards. Okay, so it's in my cart. It won't let me send it, though. Why won't it let me send it? Do you have the minimum purchase in the cart? Because I pretty much knew she did not. So from there it devolved into her being quite upset because she wanted just a single cheese pizza delivered for $8. It wasn't worth our time. Not overlooking the irony of how much of my meaningless life's minutes were used up in this farce. She refused to add anything to the order, got fed up with the whole net thing, and just had me charge her full price for a single cheese pizza. Nothing else. Wanted a deal, but I told her, honestly, even if I had any sort of deal for her, that would just take the delivery to below our minimum, and we wouldn't be able to deliver it. And when I mean honestly, by this time I had given up on nice and was going for straightforward honest. She didn't give me sass or get upset at all from what I can tell. So I ended up respecting her a bit even though the whole thing was a poop move. And while I was on the phone with her I couldn't take calls from other customers, make pizza, drop wings. But I did get to Reddit for a moment. 2. I work with a local food delivery company in a small city, within a big county. We deliver food all across the country from local restaurants to customers who order online through our website or app. One day I had to deliver to a guy that ordered from downtown, where 80% of the places we deliver from are located. I look at the ticket. 11 miles from the restaurant. No CC tip. However, we have an automated distance fee that adds $1 after every extra mile. I still got paid decently. I arrive at the house and ring his doorbell. No answer. I knock again and ring his doorbell. No answer. Five minutes later, same thing. No answer. I keep trying the front door because this dude has a dog that was barking its head off at the entrance of the carport. I call the customer's cell phone that was provided on the ticket and I could hear it ringing inside the house. While it was ringing, I put my face against the window next to his front door, and I could see his phone through the blinds laying on the living room table. No one was around. Couldn't visually see anyone, didn't hear any footsteps after the ringing stopped. Nothing. Great. The dog had left the carport by this point, so I go into his carport and knock on the door there. The very first knock of my knuckles on the door pushes the door forwards. The door was cracked open. Well, I'm thinking to myself, is this motherfucker dead? Was he killed? Is he just asleep? Did he overdose? What the fuck is up? I peep my head through the cracked open door. 
Look to my right first, and there is his living room. All messy with a pet iguana and snake in separate glass containers. What am I getting myself into, I thought. Then I look to my left. There is the kitchen, the sink, the fridge, the table. A screen door and a pair of legs and a penis. Not the kind of tip I was expecting. This guy was butt-ass naked sun-tanning on a lawn chair in his backyard. Listening to music with earphones in, knowing he ordered delivery an hour ago. Come on, bro. I kept knocking on the carport door, watching him with my peripheral vision. But I couldn't look at this naked fool. He still couldn't hear my knocks. So I pushed the door open and slammed it shut. Finally, he recognizes I'm at the door, turns sideways, and puts on a towel. He walks up to the door and takes the food. Thanks, man. Sorry, I was listening to music. No problem. Have a good one. I quietly laughed the whole way back to my car and messaged my dispatcher about what happened. Thankfully, I haven't had to deliver to this address again. 3. So this happened today, I'll try to keep it short. I am an assistant manager for the store I'm at. I was working on something on the computer for the store while my boss, the store manager, was grabbing dough from a neighboring store. A call gets through to me at my computer station. Thank you for choosing Hellfreezer Pizza. I'm not so growing up. How can I help you? How much are your wings? An eight piece is about seven dollars. No, I need twenty. Uh, we have a fourteen piece for eleven dollars. Okay, fine. I'll get that then. Can you deliver those wings? Of course, I just need an address. One, two, three, four Street Lane. I want to add a medium pizza. Is there any specials for that? I'm not sure, let me check. Hmm. No, only for our eight piece and a pizza. Are you fucking kidding me? Mm, nope, afraid not. I'm sorry, sir. Well, that's fucking ridiculous. I want my fucking wings sent to 1234 Street Lane. That's so fucking stupid. I can't fucking believe that. At this point, I hung up on him. I'm not about to send a driver to this guy. I add a note into the customer profile that he has harassed me and to be extremely cautious when answering his call. Forty minutes later, my boss was still out, and I'm still working on my project on the computer. A call gets sent to my station, same number as before. Thank you for choosing Hellfreezer Pizza, I'm not so grown up, how can I help you? Oh, fuck no. I need your fucking customer service number, you don't fucking hang up on a fucking customer! Sir, I only hung up on you because you were cursing at me for not having a special on our 14-piece wings. Oh my god, I wasn't fucking cursing at you! And I'm going to have your fucking job, you fucking- At this point, I hung up on him again, and went back to my project. As soon as my boss came back, I let him know what had transpired. He told me that he supported hanging up with belligerent assholes, and that if a customer care case came from the office, he'll handle it. A few hours later, we were in full swing dinner rush. My boss was on the cut table and dispatch station, handling business, and I was jumping between stations that needed help. All of a sudden, I hear my insider from the main order taking station having issues with a phone call, and go over to investigate. Oh, I'm sorry, sir, but you don't have to curse at me. Oh, would you like to talk to my manager on this situation? Sir, cursing at me won't... No. Sir? Sir, I understand. No. At this point, he hung up and yelled to the other insiders not to put the 14-piece chicken in. He looked visually upset, and I asked him what happened. He just started yelling at me, saying how he's fucking disappointed with our fucking store, and he wants his fucking wings delivered to 1234 Street Lane. I've realized it was the same guy from before. Hey boss, that guy that cursed at me just called in, the wings guy. Oh yeah? Yeah, he just yelled at oh. Okay. My boss picked up the phone and called the number on screen. Hi, this is the boss from the Hellfreezer Pizza. I'm sorry, ma'am, but you're not allowed to order from us anymore. Then my boss hung up the phone laughing and quickly added no service into the customer profile. Boss, that was a man. I know, and he was so mad. 
4. For context, at this time I worked at a massive pizza delivery company. You can probably guess the name. Normally it was extremely busy on the weekends, however, it was probably around 3pm so it was just me, my manager, and a few drivers in. Most of our interaction with customers would be through the phone, and 99% of the calls we got were either complaints or questions about their order. Our phones were right next to the dough area, so when I answered this call, my manager was in earshot. Hi, this is Happy Hell Pizza, this is Jade, how can I help you? The customer answers with an attitude, but nothing I haven't heard before. I'll refer to them as Cust. I need to place an order. Sure, what would you like? Everything's fairly normal at this point, and I put their order in. Great, and is that for delivery? Yeah, what's the total? Your order is £25.49. What? On the website it says £21. Why is it more expensive? That's strange. My apologies. Could you read your order back again so I can double check I have it right? The website often has exclusive offers, ones that we don't have in stores, so this was probably why it was cheaper. Regardless, I checked the order anyway. She reads the order and I have it all correct on the screen. Yep, that's the order I have here. Well, why the fuck is it cheaper online? I'm not sure about that as we don't have any control over the website here. If the order is cheaper online, you can place it there and it will be delivered in the same amount of time. No, I want to do it over the phone. That's fine, but it will be £25.49. pence. But why the fuck is it more expensive? She is screaming down the phone now. So much I actually have turned the volume down. I'm sorry, but I'm not sure. We have no input in the website, but sometimes the website has preset deals, which may be why it's cheaper. But I want to order it here. That will be easier for you. Why are you making it cost more money? Again, I'm sorry, but this is what the system is saying, and there's no way for me to change the price. It makes no difference to us whether you order here or online, so you can order online and have it cheaper. Why can't you change the system? We used a computer system which automatically had prices and deals installed, and there's no way for any employee to alter it as it's installed by the company, like the website. The system is like the website, and there's no way for me to change it here. Well, something has changed to make it cost more money. Put your manager on. I mute the phone, brief my manager, and gesture as I pass the phone that this was one of those customers. Hi, this is the manager. What's the problem? At this point, she's so loud I can hear her from the other side of the kitchen, and my manager didn't take any shit when it came to people like this. She's making it more expensive on the system. I'm sorry, I don't understand what you mean. It's £21 online, but she's telling me it's twenty-five forty-nine. Well, you should order online then. No, she's changing it. She's changing the price so she makes more money. At this point, my manager is done. No, she isn't changing the price. There's no possible way for her to do that. Yes, she is. Put her back on. No, you can order now with me or order online. I just told you, it's more expensive. Order it online then. The customer hangs up. And me and my manager get back to work whilst discussing how strange that call was. And my manager that she's never had a call quite like that. We get a few laughs out of it and carry on working. About five minutes later, the phone rings again. Brilliant. However, it wasn't the same customer as before. Somehow, this one was worse. I'll refer to this one as Cuss 2. Hi, this is Happy Hell Pizza. You're speaking to Jade, how can I help? Why are you mugging my partner off? What? You were on the phone to her earlier, trying to mug her off, changing the prices. What the... Fuck. I'm sorry, but my manager explained to your partner that I cannot alter the prices. Just order your pizza online. Oh, you're trying to fucking mug her off by changing it. My brother's an inspector, and I'm going to report this and have you all done for fraud. I haven't done anything to change the prices. My manager told you. I'm going to call my brother fucking report this. He'll sort you out. You're lucky I don't come down there my fucking self trying to rip her off. At this point, my manager's signalling to me to just end the call as she's getting super aggressive. And clearly this conversation isn't going anywhere. I can't help you, just order online. She's still rambling now as my manager loses her shit and grabs the phone from me. She can't help you. She hasn't changed any prices. 
Please send your brother down to inspectors. I'll be waiting right here. She hung up, and we didn't hear from either of them again that night. 5. So during my time working for Father Jonathan, I was first introduced to the joys of weed. Pizza delivery and weed kind of go hand in hand, don't you think? While many people try to tip me with weed, and usually succeeded, one story stands out in my mind, the one time I accidentally gave a customer a pre-rolled blunt. My manager was a pretty chill guy. He got his work done, but wasn't afraid to have fun and let us have fun either. I can remember loads of times that he would tell me that there was something in the shed he needed my help carrying inside the store. When I would make my way out to the shed, he'd be waiting there with a lit blunt and we would smoke it together. It's important to note that while I could roll a mean joint at this point in time, I wasn't even able to roll a shitty looking blunt. My manager, however, could roll a Cuban cigar looking blunt. To this day, I have never seen a prettier blunt than the ones he rolled. So I asked him on this particular day, while we were smoking, if he could use my stash to roll me a blunt because I had no papers for a joint. And he obliged. See, my plan was to wait until I got through the checkpoint and onto the base before I lit up. This was a common occurrence with me, and wasn't really anything new. This day, though, oh, this day. So Fort Wakenbake was literally right across the street from our store. You could walk to the checkpoint in about 30 seconds from our store. And I had this fat blunt just sitting in my center console. I pull out of the store and start making my way up the semi-steep hill. The hill was just steep enough that you couldn't really see the checkpoint from our store, so I had no way of knowing what I was getting myself into until it was much too late. I pulled up to the gate and lo and behold, they were doing random car searches with drug dogs. And there I am with this fat blunt in my truck. Oh well, they don't search everyone, and I'm pretty sure they won't ask me to pull into the searching lane, because I quite obviously have a car topper on. Boy, was I wrong. They motioned me over into that lane. I'll be honest, folks. My butthole was puckering so much at this point, I'm sure that a piece of my seat was missing. I was terrified. I only had one idea of how to get out of this mess, so I slowly reached into my center console and grabbed the blunt. There were like three people ahead of me. I very gingerly, not drawing any unnecessary attention to myself, pulled the box of pizza out of the bag. I opened it and slid the blunt inside the pizza, closed the box, and put everything back the way I had it. I really hoped it would work, but I pretty much assumed I was going to go to jail at this point. I was pretty much resigned to it. I pulled my truck into the search area, put it in park, and killed the engine. As I stepped out of the truck, the military police were opening my passenger door and bringing the search dog near. Of course, the dog immediately hit the scent and started barking at the pizza box. The cop surprisingly just said, Oh, he smells your pizza and wants some of it. Guys, now I know these dogs are trained way better than that. So please don't hit me with that logic. I know already. To this day, I don't know why he let me go without searching my truck. But he did. I can only guess that either he was feeling lazy that day or was giving me a break because I worked for a living. I don't know exactly what the deal was, but regardless, he let me go and I wasn't about to question the motives. I got back in my truck and pulled onto the base and started driving towards my delivery street. I was so worked up about what had just happened that I decided I was already high enough and wasn't going to light up just yet. I don't remember exactly why, but for some reason I had to pull over and call the customer. This is important later. Most likely it was for directions to their address or something. But regardless, I had to call the customer before I showed up. So yeah, I showed up to the customer's house and delivered my pizza as usual, and started heading back to the store. By this time I had calmed down a little, so I reached for the... Wait, where did... No! So you guys remember where I stashed it, right? Yeah? I done goofed, didn't I? Just then my phone rang. Can you guess who it was? 
Yeah, the customer was calling me back. Hey, man. I just wanted to let you know you left this blunt in my pizza. Do you want to come back and get it? I was like, no, you can have it. Then he just starts laughing. Well, good, because my wife and I are already smoking it. More laughing. Click. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed hearing about the time I almost got arrested and delivered weed instead of pizza. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to as yet untitled pizza video. I'll come up with something before I publish it. Well, this one took ages to put together, I think about a year actually. Just kind of gradually checking, 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 and today was the day, so there we go. Okay, I'm going to head off for now, keep this outro a bit short, because I've got a few things I need to get done for somebody who's coming to do stuff in my house tomorrow. Uh, nothing fun, but you know, so it has to be done. Uh, so I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves.